Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel study with Muntaz and today I am sure with another video on scratch and it is very simple project which is called as fruit catcher. So there I have taken so many sprites of the fruits and there is one ball which can make the game actually interesting. So how it works, let's see. You have to move the ball left and right and you have to avoid touching the ball. And you can see the scores are increasing one by one whenever I'm collecting the fruits. And suppose, what if, if I touch the ball? My game will be over at that time and it will show the final score here. So let's just learn the simple and quick project in few minutes. So let's not waste the time and let's start the project. So as you know, we have to go to create to start our project. And right now I'm, I have not logged it into my account. So it is very simple project. So let's just do it very quickly. Take a ball from the sprite section. As you know what a sprite is. Take the ball here. If you want to increase the size, increase the size a little bit. You can just try making it 150 and keep it here. And take a backdrop of blue sky, which is very easily available. Now it's looking like that the ball is on the ground itself. Now what is the function you need to give to your ball that you need to move it right and left. You know, if the sprite has to move left or right, it has to use the X coordinate. So what we will be giving, we will be giving the same condition to the ball that if you press your right arrow key, the ball should go in right direction. And if you press left arrow key, it should go in left direction. So when green frag is clicked, that is the start point of your game. You have to give a condition. For condition, we use if then. Then we have to go to sensing to choose the key we want to use. Choose key space pressed, put it here, click on space, change it to right arrow. So if key right arrow press, it has to move. So we have to get it from the motion. So take the code, change x by 10. Why x? Because x left or right is x coordinate. After this, go to control. Take another, or oh, just duplicate this section, control C, control V. Put it below that. Change the right arrow to left arrow and make it minus 10. So let's just try this code. Press the green flag. You will see that my ball is not moving actually because I have not put the condition inside forever to make it happen always. Now do this, press the green flag and you will see that it will start moving left and right perfectly. Why we have kept minus? Because it has to go in opposite direction. And if you like imagine the stage in the form of coordinates, the left side of x is negative. So you have to keep minus 10. So this is the only thing we, you have to do for the ball coding. That's it. Now let's take another fruit, which is called, what do we call it? A fruit. Take a fruit, keep it on the top where you want it to be, keep it there. If it is looking so big, make it small, make it 50. So I want my apple to fall from the sky. So I have to set this position. So go to events, when green flag is clicked, go to motion, choose go to XY. It will fix the position of your apple. You can test it by this, it is fixed now. Now, what do you want to make happen? You want apple to be on the top, but you want it to take random positions on right axis and left axis. That means it should take any value from left to right. That is on X coordinate. To make this happen, what you can do is you can give the pick random value inside x coordinate because you want to fix your y so keep it fixed but for here you can give the value minus 240 to 240 now the question comes why it is 200 and minus 240 it is because this is the whole length of your x coordinate on left it is minus 240 on right it is 240 so let's just test this code see it's perfectly taking random values on x coordinate and fixed on the top now the next step we want is we want to make the apple come down that means it has to change the y up and down is y coordinate so it has to change the y so what we will do we will make the apple come down with the change in y condition and now the question is should we take a negative value or a positive value we know that it is y but here we have to take negative value because it has to come down so you will see that apple is falling so fast. You can reduce the value if you want the speed less. Minus seven, it will fall slowly. 
Now, what is the next process? You can see the apple is falling only one time. We wanted to make it fall again and again. But here you can see the position where the apple is touching the ground is minus 173. So what we can give, we can give a value to the apple that if the apple reaches to this position, then it should go up again to the same one. So let's just give this condition, go to control, choose if then, put it here, go to operators and give a condition of less than operator y less than because here we are taking negative value of y. So whenever you are taking negative value, you have to use less than operator. Let's give a negative value of 173 and this is your y position. So we have to keep in the empty one. If y position is less than negative of 173, then what should happen? The apple should go up again. So let's just duplicate this code and put it here inside f and test it. So now the apple is falling by itself again and again whenever it is going to that position, which is minus 173. Now you will see when the apple is falling and moving the ball, it is not looking like that it is catching it. We have to make it look like that the ball is actually catching the fruit. So let's keep it here only and give one more condition. If the apple is touching the ball, then what should happen? Apple should go up again in the same condition. Go to events. When green flag is clicked, go to control, take forever, choose if then, and give a condition of touching the basket. Sensing, touching mouse pointer, click on mouse pointer, change it to the sprite you want, make it to touched, and then just duplicate the same thing again and put it there. Now let's see how it works. So you will see whenever the apple is touching that basket, it is going up. At this point, you can add a sound block also. You can make a pop sound. So whenever the apple is going to touch that basket, it should make a pop sound. Go to code, go to sound, put start sound pop. So whenever it is going to touch it, it will make that sound. Great, perfect. Now, if you want to make the game more interesting, what you can add is you can add a score pattern. Go to variables, take make a variable, choose a score. What is variable? It is a reserved memory location where we can store any value we want, any information we want here. Here, I want to store the score value. So, I'll just make a variable called score. And whenever your game starts, your score has to be zero. Uh, zero. It has to be set to zero. So you can set my score to zero and your score should change whenever the apple is getting touched by the basket. So change the score by one. Let's see. Yeah, perfect. Why it is need to get back to zero so that when it is right now four, when you press green flag, it will come back to zero. Now the interesting part, what you can do is you can just add one more, few more strikes, duplicate. And what you can do is you can just take other fruits also. Take these fruits, take the size. Let's delete this apple, okay? Go to this banana, go to apple, Take this code, make it over the banana, and when it shakes, leave it. Do the same thing here. Put it on the banana when it shakes, leave. You will see that the code is duplicated here. Go to the apple again, do that again. Yeah, now both the codes are there. So you can just play it and you will see that, yes, it is working the same way. If you feel like that, it is taking time, you can hide it and then you can show it. You can hide it initially and you can make it wait for two seconds or one second and after that you can make it fall. So go to looks and choose show again and put it here. So initially it will not be shown but after two seconds it will be shown. Okay, this is the thing you can do. So now two fruits are done. Now let's take another one. Let's take a strawberry 
and choose that and keep it here. If you feel like the size is really big, make it 50. Again, the same thing you need to do. Take the banana, take the code over the strawberry. When it shakes this way, then leave that. Another same thing. Now let's see both the codes are added or not. Yeah, it is added. You can just increase the time if you want so that all three should not come together. So many more fruits are falling and making sound that way. Okay. And you, if you want, you can change the sound. Okay, why it is not making the pop sound here? Because it is not added in this sound block. You have to add it for the particular fruit and then it will make that sound. So it is popped there. I think it was not making in the banana as well. Go to sound. This sound option. Add the pop sound there. So it will be added that way. You can add multiple fruits if you want and you can just make your game work that way. So it is going to add this course as well. Yeah, for every fruit it is adding the score. Great. So it will become a little challenging game. And after this, to make your game more interesting, you can paint the sprite or you can just upload the sprite from the Google. Just make it like that. Uh, let's add a bomb sprite here. And just take uh, this one and take the color. You can take yellow, orange, whatever you like, or the red one. Just give some these kinds of thing and let's just put a red mark inside of danger don't touch me okay and let's make the size it has to be bigger than the fruit but not that much big let's make it 80. the coding will be same but here we will make a code we will not add a score part in this what do you say in the Bomb sprite, we are not going to add the score part. We will just mean that if the basket is touching this bomb, then the game should be over and it should stop everything. First, let's just copy the code for the bomb sprite and then we'll make game over backdrop. Copy it the same way. Go to sprite. Everything has to be same. But here we just not want the score part and we don't want this sound part and we don't want this going back to the same position part. Remove set score from here as well. Put it back. So when if touching ball, what should happen? It should switch backdrop. It should switch backdrop to game over backdrop. Now we don't have added the game over backdrop. Let's just paint it. Delete the first one if you want. Take the backdrop to make it game over one so that you can remember while doing coding. Take that. You can just zoom it out. Take that color, take the text and write the text to a different color because otherwise it won't show up because it is already in red and write game over that way. If you want to change the font, you can do it and you can just increase it. So it will show up like this. So it should, so initially, when the game is starting, your backdrop should be your, the real one and another time the blue sky one and at that time it should be the game over. Let's see how it works. So it is touching, it is showing game over, but it is not stopping anything. Go to control, scroll down, choose a stop all, put it there. Let's see. Everything has stopped and the game is over. So this is all for today's video. I hope that it is going to be very easy for you. And I have just tried to make it so short so that you can learn it very quickly and can try out making it. So just keep supporting my videos and keep subscribing and loving. Yeah, that's all. Bye, everyone. Take care. See you with new video.